Greetings and salutations! Welcome to the Easy Linux Show, version 18.3. This one was recorded on January the 13th, 2018. And mainly in this show, I want to show you what I did with my new GNOME desktop installation. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about why I ended up changing my distro here on this machine and talk a little bit about some of the problems some folks are having after installing the updates for Spectre and Meltdown that came down a couple of days ago. The last show we talked about Linux Mint, talking about moving to kernel 413. A lot of folks did that and then they found out that their NVIDIA graphics wasn't working properly. Also, some folks on Ubuntu that weren't running Linux Mint necessarily, but Ubuntu ended up with machines that would not boot at all. So if you end up in a situation where you go to do the update and you install 413 as they recommend, and then you find your graphics don't work or something screwed up, as long as you can get to this application, which is the update manager, then you can get to the kernel manager and you can roll back your kernel. You could go back to the kernel that you had installed. That's actually quite easy to do. I mean, if you can't even get to anything, but you can restart the computer, hold down the shift key, and then when you come back, uh, you, when the machine boots up, you're going to have the option to go into Advanced Options for Linux Mint in the Grub menu, and then you can choose the older kernel. You can boot it there, and then you can come in here and uninstall the new kernel. You could uh, leave it that way if you wanted to, or you could roll back to a good patched kernel. The 4.4 long-term support series from Ubuntu has been patched, so it's 4.4.0-109 is the latest that's been patched. They did put out a 108, and that ended up borking up a lot of people's computers, but that's all settled down right now. So they have a patch for the patch, and you can roll back. And then once you get rolled back, you, you, you can always boot off of an older kernel as long as it's still installed just by holding down that shift key. Once you figure out what kernel is going to work for your computer, then you can just go into the settings and you can change this to where it will not let you see kernels. So if we go here to, let's see, where is it? Preferences. Then all you have to do is uh, come in here. I'm, where is it exactly? It says include updates, which uh, there's something specifically in here about kernels right there. All you got to do is uncheck those boxes and then it becomes it becomes manual. You, you can't upgrade the kernel unless you do it manually. And that's just a matter of jumping into the kernel tool and seeing if there's any available every now and again. So it works out pretty good that way. Uh, there are some Mint machines that I work with people on that are done that way because they really can't change the kernel or it doesn't work with their hardware. So I just wanted to show you guys that there is a way back. Uh, you could also uninstall the NVIDIA drivers. You could go to the Nouveau drivers if you wanted to. They work almost as good as the closed source proprietary NVIDIA drivers, but not quite. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those deals. It's a compromise for sure. This happened to me on this machine and all of my other machines that I directly administer, all the other ones in the house that are running Linux Mint, no problems whatsoever. Everything went fine. Updates are okay. Of course, those have Intel or AMD graphics, right? No problems there. This machine runs NVIDIA, and it runs a rather old card. And yeah, I know, I could probably go out and buy another video card and all that stuff, but I'm lazy. So my way of fixing the problem was to say, well, forget it. I will just do something else for a while because I like to try out different things and kind of went back to a distribution that I have used on and off for many many years and that is Ubuntu with the GNOME 3 desktop. Ubuntu GNOME of course that has gone away now that Ubuntu 1710 and 1804 are going to be shipping with GNOME by default but Ubuntu GNOME 1604 is still supported. It runs a stable version of the GNOME desktop and it uh, allowed me to have the 4.4 kernel and that's probably the most stable at this point with the patch. So to get that, I actually went online and I downloaded the 1604.1 image of Ubuntu GNOME. And you can get all of the older images, the old ISO files, just by doing a bit of searching. 
they're posted and available for download. And that way, I started out with the 4.4 kernel, and it won't try and move to a later kernel like right now. It's on 4.13 uh, for the latest um, dot version of Ubuntu 16.04. And then I kind of themed up the desktop a little bit. Uh, I added the Arc Dark theme, and I like that. You can get that from Noobs Lab. Uh, they say to install their, uh, you know, their PPA to do that. I don't do that. I actually go to Launchpad and I go find the actual dev file and I download it and I put it on my computer. And that way I don't have to worry about hooking up a PPA to Noobs Lab. I don't really care about getting updates for a theme. You know what I mean? As long as it works, who cares? So if I go into Downloads, or rather, uh, no, that's Documents. I want Downloads. So if I go in here and take a look at packages, you see that I have it sitting right here, the Arc Dark themes. And that's pretty cool. The GNOME desktop is not for beginners in its vanilla form. If you download Ubuntu 1710 and 1804, they do a pretty good job of doctoring up and making it useful. But in its raw state, when you first download it, it really doesn't do much. There's a lot of tweaking that you have to do to the desktop. And I've covered this in past videos, of course, but we have a lot of new folks on the channel, and we have a lot of folks on the channel who are new to Linux entirely. So I'm going to take a few minutes and kind of go through a little bit of the setup and a little tour of the desktop. Now, like I said, this been, this one's really been themed up. I've got mine to look a little bit more like maybe like Mac OS 10 because I got the dock down here, and then we have the bar up here. So we can look at uh, the activities by pressing the super key or clicking up here in this corner and what I wanted to show you was this particular application and I'm just going to put in tweak and this is where I, you can set your themes once they're installed so I have arc dark and for the icon set I have been using gnome colors common which uh, I use on a, the Cinnamon desktop a lot. And I did install it, but I kind of liked the Adweta or Adweta, however you say that, uh, icon set because it, they're just so gaudy. I like gaudy icons that are huge. Like, check this out. So if I look at the applications, I mean, they're just monstrous icons. So <laughs> They have glanceability, which means you can just glance at the screen and go, oh, that's what I want. Whereas with a lot of the newer icon sets, you know the circles and the squares and everything I find myself looking at it and going I don't know what that is just by looking I have to actually look at it and go what is that so that's why it's set up that way and the arc dark theme is is very clean and it doesn't make things huge it it, it kind of actually makes things smaller than the Edwaita theme does the the standard theme and uh, of course it gives you a dark theme and I like dark themes so the other thing that we'll talk about here is extensions, which is really how you get GNOME to be useful. You have to install extensions to make it so that you can use it. And I have a few installed, not a whole lot. Uh, I don't want to go extension crazy because one of the downsides to the GNOME desktop is the fact that if you do get an update, sometimes they break the extension and all of a sudden you boot it up and it doesn't work. But this is GNOME, what, 3.18 that we're on? because it's the old 1604 gnome so none of this is going to change which is nice it's this it is what it is so to get extensions in gnome you can manage them from there from the tweak tool but really what you needs to do is go in here and put the integration gnome integration on your browser which is what I've done here so if I click the little gnome foot up there now I come to a page where it's going to show me all of the extensions that I have installed and it's integrated uh, with that. It works with Firefox and it works with Chrome and it, it's, a, it's a nice tool to have. So it shows what we've got and what's turned on and all that kind of stuff here. And you can just get more. You can search for more. So pretty much all that are available for your version of GNOME will show up there. The, there's another site if you want to play with themes with GNOME and that is the one called uh, Gnome Look, where they have a lot of user themes that are done, and uh, there's some cool th stuff up there. Although, because uh, the way that, you know, people, that's kind of like all uh, just 
hobbyists who are creating themes there, sometimes you can get them and they don't work so well. Some of them work great and some of them don't work so well at all. So the, the base install of Ubuntu GNOME is, is pretty lean. They don't really give you a whole lot to work with. Uh, they come with it comes with like evolution for the mail client which i don't like so i replaced that with thunderbird uh, they have some gnome applications in there like photos and music which i find completely useless so i go ahead and take those off any ubuntu spin comes with uh, backups or a program called deja dupe and i always get rid of that because i don't need it so you have to do a lot of surgery to get this to work. You have to install things and uninstall things. So if you're kind of familiar with doing that, it's no big deal. But if you're a newbie, eh, the stock experience isn't that great. Let's put it that way. So I uninstalled a lot of stuff and added a lot of stuff. Like for playing back video, I want to use the MPV player, which is just this really super basic media player, but it'll play just about every kind of file on the planet so when I click on a video this is associated with it and it will play that so that's pretty cool and then uh, you know basic standard stuff here got rhythm box installed that comes with the distribution that's your music and then let me see here what else do I do I really do not do a whole lot special simply because of the fact that I don't use a great deal of applications. I only use about five applications in, in my daily work. There is one thing that I did do. I got rid of gedit and I installed Pluma, which is the editor that text editor that usually comes with the Mate desktop. It's also the same editor that XED in Linux Mint is based on. So if you use Linux Mint, you have a text editor called XED. That's Pluma with a a few things changed actually so to make this work and make it familiar to me I put Pluma in and then use the cobalt theme and, and set it up to do what I want it to do I need to see the margins I need the lines to be numbered so that I can work on scripts I also use this program to write posts a lot of the time that I'm gonna put up on Facebook or something like that and do it in plain text and there's a spell check utility in here and helps me catch typos I know I'm not really that great with I do a lot of typos so I need all the help that I can get. <laughs> it's one of those kind of deals. Uh, so, you know, this is what it looks like when a script is loaded in Pluma. But we've seen that before. So that's an application that I really have to have. Another one that I like to have on the machine, of course, is HTOP. That lets you control processes and do all that stuff. And yeah, it's working hard right now because I'm capturing video. You'll see that the processors are actually chugging along quite a bit. And uh, that's just because I'm using uh, video capture software to capture this in high definition. And uh, we did a whole, I did a whole video on HTOP. If you haven't seen the past videos, you can just search you know, like Joe Collins and HTOP and it'll pop up. I did a video about that not too long ago. It's a great application. Of course, I have to have XBT on here as my own application. I mean, that's got to be in my dock, right? Um, this is a applic to to kind of turn the dash into a dock. This is a, an application called Dash to Dock. It's an extension that you can install. Usually on GNOME, when you go to the Activities menu, your little dock will appear over here, sort of like a dash, and that's the only time you see it. And the, the Dash to Dock it intelligently hides, so it goes away. So yeah, I mean, I had some fun here. I got to play with GNOME, and it's like just Ubuntu with a GNOME desktop on it. It's all it is. I mean, that's what Ubuntu is now. Is with <laughs> It's Ubuntu with GNOME on it. So I figured this would be a good place to go. And my video drivers work. Uh, the card that's in here takes the old 340 NVIDIA driver. And the 340 NVIDIA driver is... I know it's not patched yet, but I'm you know it's a minuscule risk, gang. I'm not really sitting around worrying about being attacked by Spectre or Meltdown. I mean, they have got to patch for it. I understand that, but they they kind of, you know, when the media gets a hold of these things, then the developers feel like, well, I've got to patch it right now, right now, right now. I've got to do it. And then we get stuff that breaks. That's exactly what's happened in this situation. So just don't panic. Calm down. Wait for the patches to settle out. Everything will be fine. And we'll work our way through this situation. It'll be okay. And uh, yes, I do call it the GNOME desktop. I do not call it GNOME. 
There are people out there who now call Gnome Gnome. I have called it Gnome for 20 years, and that's just the way it is. There are also people out there who name their children Moon Rocket and drink yak milk. I'm not one of those either. So whatever you want to do is perfectly fine with me, but don't put in the comments, it's Gnome. It's been Gnome for 20 years, and when I type in G-N-O-M-E, you know, in the, like, Google, and I get the definition, guess what? The little garden fairy pops up that's what it is all right gnome it's gnome call it whatever you want to i call it gnome <laughs> so yeah this is just a real quick video to show you around show you what i'm doing uh i was really really thrilled with linux mint 18.3 and i still am and i still recommend it to be the distribution to start out with for sure but the only thing about it is is that it wouldn't work on this machine and I tried everything under the sun. I rolled back kernels. I tried different drivers. I tried everything. It just wasn't, it wasn't happening on this particular computer. And this is the one that I make videos on. And this is the one that I do all my work on. It's a really, really nice machine other than it's a little long in the tooth. So just go with something that works for a while. And I may look for a video card and I may not. I'm lazy. And I don't like dumping money into things. I don't like something that, well, it works. Why should I change it? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I always have bad luck whenever I order parts like that, too. I, I get the exact part. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work. <laughs> I just, something happens. It gets broken in shipping. I, ended up, I end up with this card that I can't do anything with or have to return. So that is why I am loath to go digging around in the machine and change it as long as it's working. I'm a happy boy. So that's it for this video. It was just a real quick look around and just to kind of show you what I'm playing with on the main computer here. And uh, I was just nothing wrong with Linux Mint 18.3. I just thought it would be fun to go back to this one. I always end up back with a, on Ubuntu with GNOME sooner or later. It's, it's one of the first full-time distributions of Linux that I ever used. And then, I mean, just, well, of course, originally Ubuntu was GNOME. But then I also ran Ubuntu with GNOME several years ago. So I've done it off and on. And I usually end up sticking with it for maybe two weeks or a month. And then something happens to tick me off and I move on to something else. I don't know how long this is going to last, but we'll see. Let's put it that way. We'll see. How's that? That's a good way of doing it. So check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux and uh, you can also find a lot of my videos posted at freedompenguin.com along with content from a lot of other great content providers that talk about Linux there. There's always something fun to look at on freedompenguin.com. We will do this again soon. Thank you for watching.